somehow, and I saw this box at the hobby store last week. It had another customer's name on it. They were getting another dozen the next day, so they were like, all right, he can have this one. I haven't even, this is the first time I've actually seen the back of this box. Nice. $49.99. I've heard it'll go for as low as $42. So uh, $50 is definitely a little high when you throw a tax on top of that. First thing before I even open the box is to show off this guy. Let's do this actually. So it's nearly two as tall as the old boxes. And it's nearly as big that way as well. This thing is monstrous, to say the least. At 13 and 3 quarters by 10 and a quarter by 5 and a half, this thing is a damn big box. Assembled kit is 17 inches wide, 13 inches long at 132 scale. It's identical in size to the original shooting miniatures used to create the visual effects for the original show. Studio scale model. Injected plastic. This is a first. And that's really something. So let's open this up. <laughs> there's some boxes that you open up and there's a whole lot of empty space and not a lot of plastic this they could not have filled it too much more they could have a little bit of room there but it's really nice to see a big box that is packed big nice so so far lots of thumbs ups going around right now not much on the uh, inner tray details there just the top piece the big old logo 2013 whole bunch of middle pieces uh, it's a great canopy size right there Some laughs, some confusion about this base. It doesn't make much sense to me. The bottom piece, geez, this thing is just going to be freaking huge. The entire decal sheet, instructions, and an art print, which is a little dented, unfortunately. So it's a nice little touch. I might hang it around somewhere. We'll see. So looking over the instructions, I can see I'm already in trouble. Apply cement to the inside surfaces of model only. Avoid getting cement on outer surfaces of model. Yeah, I'm really bad at that. Use cement sparingly and avoid getting cement on hand so as not to mar or smear plastic surfaces. I'm definitely bad at that. Do not hurry. Work carefully and patiently. Bad at that. Before cementing, it is advisable to assemble parts dry. So, dry fit, yeah. For best results, assemble model in the order indicated. Ah, uh, we'll see about that. The only Mobius model I've ever built is the Jupiter 2, and I'm glad I didn't follow the instructions on that one. But overall, it looks pretty simple and straightforward. Two cool white LEDs in each engine. Light block them off with a little scrap styrene. There's going to be two amber or yellow LEDs way in the front over here. And uh, you could even set the guns to fire, I bet, if you wanted. It's really nice that they've broken all this detail apart. 
that's really uh wow that's gonna look nice I bet ah oh, there's not one step for the lower hull nothing gets glued to the lower hull at all it's all one piece and obviously the wing halves and it looks like there's a single tiny piece that goes below the cockpit somewhere but oh that's really surprising Yeah, well, it's like 90% of the work is right around the cockpit area, it looks like. It's crazy. Yeah, so I'm not totally psyched about this. Do you cut to the inside or the outside of the line, for example, if you really want to be super accurate? And if you're going to provide these decals, even though these are monsters, Supply them too. Yeah, that certainly would be a big decal to lay down. But, really, now if you're going to take a subject as far as they did, then a simple vinyl mask would have been a nice touch. And one for the Pentagon as well, there, the double Pentagon. Wow, so this really is just amazing. What was a good sized kit from Monogram and later Ravel. This is just a monster, and it's going to be a big thing to display, 17 by 13 inches. That's, uh, that's a good amount of volume right there. So, it could very well be that these stay in popularity, because making a set of three of these in the classic Cylon flying formation compared to a set of three of these, you could do three of these in just about the space of one of these guys. But having one of these, you definitely gotta. I was trying to, I was trying to think back a few years, and I was thinking it was Richard Long Rel who had done the Cylon Raider. But as I saw in the instruction there, there's thanks to Mike Salzo, and that triggered the memory of the Salzo Raider. This was done by Mike mostly, uh, if I recall correctly, full scale, all the original parts. This was done in resin, possibly fiberglass, pretty sure it was resin. Limited run, hundreds of dollars. Essentially, this is your chance to get what is precisely, uh, almost exactly perfectly, a studio scale Cylon Raider. Amazing. Just amazing to see this here in person. And what's going to look more amazing? seeing a scale viper as well nice all these parts here pretty much just uh, went together so it probably doesn't look like there's a lot of parts here but it's actually two parts for each of the wings two parts for the body I put the lower piece all on underneath there's uh, two pieces here a piece there two pieces here and another two pieces there on the engine cowlings so there is actually a lot going on, and then there's two other full big sprue. All of this comes in four bags overall. More details on the engine covers than you get with uh, the Ravel 30th anniversary upgrade. Everything is pretty much going to be as accurate as can be, and it's just going to come down to a lot of the fine detailing, and there's certainly a lot of it. I don't see really too many soft lines anywhere at all. Uh, the gun barrels aren't hollowed at all. Even the Ravel ones were and quite possibly the monograms. But typically what you're going to do with this is borrow a cue from the military guys and make your own guns out of brass or aluminum because uh, plastic injected gun barrels just always suck. They never look good. However, you should also keep in mind that while in 1978 this probably was an empty barrel, technically if it's a laser cannon, it's going to have probably a piece of glass on the very end of it. So technically it shouldn't be a hollow barrel, but then technically it doesn't even need to be a barrel. Anyhow. Up here in front, I don't know if it's these two monstrously long tubes or these two short ones next to it that get lit. 
it's those two or those two, not all four. And either way, there's going to be some bit of drilling going on. If it's the top one, the drilling will be slightly easier because there's that indentation there. If it's the bottom one, it's quite possible that you may as well just cut that out entirely and replace it with your own tube. And then get a really thick, that's possibly what, 2 millimeter fiber optic strand. And the fiberopticstore.com does have 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter and one millimeter as well as other sizes so that might be the option to go with there and as to putting lights in the guns you'd have to replace uh, the barrels with your own tubes of course you might want to save the very end simply because it is angled a little and then just uh, trim the front off perhaps or I don't know something to work there you could probably drill that out and then just trim that off but replacing the guns yeah definitely at least the barrels the details on this would be a little tough to replicate I think you certainly could do it given the time but that's close enough so yeah some really nice little details all around and uh, this definitely does not disappoint having a look over the surface nice scribing everywhere oh yeah they really needed to take these lines beyond the minimum because this join would look that much better if it didn't stop right there if it kept going just another millimeter or two and that goes with all the lines here pretty much this line doesn't quite meet that side does that side almost does those almost do yeah, so that could have been a good touch. That almost meets right there, the second one. Hey, this one almost meets too, and that's tight and flush. So yeah, they really needed to drag those lines further. And that thing surprises me, but cool. If it belongs there, it belongs there. I don't mind that. Some really nice details down here. Beautiful details everywhere. Lots of good work inside there. And similarly, the bottom does not disappoint either. Huge. Monstrously huge. That's all there is to say about it. Overall, this is probably the first Mobius kit that I am genuinely happy with. Again, the canopy. But, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well worth the price. That Mike Salzo is involved? That really says it all right there, I think. Some nice looking parts here. And the size does not disappoint. This is just really, really, really phenomenal overall. It holds together pretty well, and uh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun when this is ready to be shot in front of my green screen here. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Wow, yeah, this is going to be... <laughs> oh, I'm really looking forward to this. So, I think i got to genuinely say... Thank you, Mobius. This is uh, an unexpected surprise, and it's definitely a really nice one as well. One major critique that I don't think can be gotten around is that if you're going to take a subject this far, clear canopy, really. That really needed to be a clear canopy. There really needed to be a cockpit in there, and... Uh, yeah, maybe someone will do it for aftermarket. Maybe somebody already is doing it for aftermarket. But making this in clear that you then do a transparent black or brown on, that's critical. Definitely critical. So let's pop open one of these Vipers and see. Well, I have got to say that I am so sorry. Out of the three Vipers here, none of them 
is off the sprue enough to be able to do a dry fit of any of them to put them side by side with this guy. Pulling out these couple pieces from the Mobius Viper, uh, basically it's going to be just a little shorter or just about as long as the Raider is, which makes the Raider just phenomenally huge. Wow. Well, hopefully someone else will have a Viper that they can put next to uh, their Mobius Raider. And really, for 50 bucks, if you're a fan of the show, if you're a modeler, this is one that you just got to get. They've definitely done something really special with this one. Really, really wish they went with a transparent canopy. Really wish they either had masks or something better than that template. But... That's the way that goes. This thing is a monster, and you're really going to want to paint those stripes on here anyway. Yeah. Well, hopefully I'll get to it someday. It's definitely, it looks like it goes together fast. There's a lot of people that seem to be throwing them together in a single weekend. That doesn't seem too tough to do. But the painting on this is definitely going to be something else. So, thanks for watching as always. See ya. Man Tom channel would like to thank the following for their sponsorship. Elliot Brown of Kingston Vacuum Works, featuring Fedoratron.com and WarmPlastic.com. Lighting for extraordinary modelers, and vacuum forming tables for designers, modelers, and engineers. Kingston Vacuum Works covers it all. Paul at TheFiberOpticStore.com, now presenting the beta version of its new site, TheFiberOpticProjects.com. For an exceptional selection and great prices of fiber optics of all sizes and quantities, thefiberopticstore.com. Carpenter Creations. If you can dream it, you can make it. Brad and Carpenter. Science fiction artiste. From full scale board cubicles or droid displays of all kinds. Carpenter Creations. Steve Neal's Garage. Props and models for motion picture and discerning collectors, as well as prosthetic makeup and CG. Contact Steve through stevenealsgarage.com. Model reviews from Round 2 Models. AMT, MPC, Polar Lights, and Lindbergh. Scale Model Attic Magazine. The Orbital Defense Engineering Commission, a 2001 A Space Odyssey specific forum for scale model kits, reviews, news, and discussion. Odec.proboards.com More than just talk, hobbytalk.com, a forum for every hobby. And for the finest reference collection of feature film studio props and miniatures and models, Modelers Miniatures and Magic at ModelerMagic.com